Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwofen's Nest. Thanks for stopping by today. I've got three thrift store flips for you today, and the first one is using this little wooden crate. I think it's really sweet, but it has all sorts of stuff on it. <laughs> These labels, oh my gosh, it is wood. It's probably not a solid really good wood more of plywood planks so I'm just using my razor to start taking these labels off and then I realized that that whole green texture was kind of like a wallpaper that was glued on and I ended up being able to peel all of that away to reveal the bare wood. I love farmhouse decor and nothing says farmhouse more to me than white so I'm going to go ahead and give this a couple of coats of white chalk paint. Inside, outside, top, bottom, everywhere I can reach is going to get some paint. Today's video is part of Thrift Flip Thursday, which is hosted on the second Thursday of every month by Shana Robinson Repurposing and Savvy Crafts with Savannah. They have a guest host this month, Camaro from Dying to DIY. You've got to go check out all of these ladies' channels. They do some amazing home decor items, thrift flips, Dollar Tree DIYs, just absolutely gorgeous. Please make sure you subscribe to their channels and tell them I sent you. I'm going to dry brush fairly heavily with Martha Stewart vintage chalk paint in the color clay. I really love the Martha Stewart line of paints. They're on the pricey side, but if you can get them on clearance like I did, it's worth the buy. I only paid $5 at Michael's. I'm doing another layer of distressing with a color called Maui Sand from Home Decor Chalk Paint, and it's like a dark charcoal. You can see here that I'm kind of going in a little bit heavy with this as well, but I'm also starting to blend that color in a little bit to give it more of an overall grayish look. I decided to use some chickens on this little crate. I thought it would be really sweet to have some eggs in it and be a little bit Easter related, but yet still farmhouse. These are some self stick or self adhesive stencils that I also picked up at Michael's when they had a Martha Stewart clearance. And I'm just using some white chalk paint and a makeup sponge and I'm pouncing up and down making sure I don't have too much paint loaded on the sponge because I don't want anything to bleed. It's always better to do a couple of light coats than one dark coat. These stencils also have a couple of little baby chicks and I thought this one would just be the perfect touch. So I'm going to add this one too and then I'm going to repeat the process on the other side of the crate. Since this has got chickens on it now, I'm going to add some eggs. I'm taking some of these wood shavings that I picked up at my local dollar store or they might have come from Dollar Tree, I'm not sure because I picked them up last year. I'm just going to cut some, put them in each of the four little slots, and then add some eggs. These eggs are ones that I had from last year. They were plastic eggs. I painted them with some really pale colors of chalk paint, speckled them up a little bit, and now I'm just going to add some bamboo skewers to the bottom of them. They have holes in them, and just poke them right into the Excelsior. This crate is absolutely adorable. My second thrift flip is this jug that I picked up for $2.99. It has a beautiful shape to it. I love that it's nice and round and squat. And I love the little spout and the ridges on the rim of it at the top. It does need a fix up though. I taped off the inside and stuffed it with newspaper to make sure that I didn't get any paint on the inside. That will make it still a usable piece. I'm using white paint and primer in one spray paint. This is a premier brand and I just get it at my local hardware store, but it's really nice. 
I started spraying it and then realized that I have a lazy Susan, which is something that comes in really handy when you're spray painting or painting anything for that matter because you can spin the product around and you don't have to touch it. I gave this piece two, almost two and a half coats of spray paint, but you could still see those leaves through. So I decided to go over it one more time with a really soft brush and some chalk paint. And that really made a difference. First of all, in the texture of it, you could see a little bit more texture with the brush strokes, which is something that I like. And it just covered really well. I'm going to paint the rim of it black so I'm just using a makeup sponge and some black chalk paint and I'm just going to be really careful at how I sponge all the way around making sure that I don't have too much paint on my sponge. I'd rather go over it a couple of times than have too much on it to start with. If you follow me on YouTube and watch my videos, you'll know that I am now addicted to printing designs on tissue paper. I'm going to take some Mod Podge and put it on my project where I want the label to be. And when I'm ready, I'll be picking it up with my paintbrush. That to me is the easiest way to be able to get it centered because then I don't have to worry about touching it with both hands. I have one hand free to help me with the placement. Now that I've got it placed, I'm going to start from the center and push my brush outwards on the design, making sure that I always have some Mod Podge on my brush because I don't want the paper to tear. Then I pounce up and down with the brush and that helps to get out any of the bubbles and wrinkles. This design will be available as a free printable. It'll be located on my Google Drive and there's a link in my description box to it. I really love how this project turned out. It really looks like a vintage milk jug. So just a reminder that there will be a playlist link down in my description box. You're not going to want to miss out on all the super flips that everyone is going to create. This last flip is just using this board that I picked up for $1.99. I've had this in my stash for a really long time. And I mean a really long time, I think over a year. Anyhow, I think it had some kind of lid to it at some point, but I'm just going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a sanding, get off some of those rough edges. It's really raw wood. It has not been stained or treated with anything. I decided to treat this with dark walnut gel stain. It's from Minwax. It's my favorite color and so easy to apply. The gel is really thick and it gives you a lot of control over where you're putting it and how much you're putting on. I'm just using a little soft rag to apply it. I'm going to rub it on and then buff it in. And then at the end, I'll just remove any excess. I really love this stain, but it does have an odor to it. So if you're going to use some type of polyurethane stain like this, make sure you do it in a ventilated area so you're not breathing in the fumes. While I wait for that stain to cure a little bit, I needed to do something for feet. I have these old cabinet knobs from my kitchen cabinets and they're like brass or gold or whatever you want to call them. I switched them out a long time ago, but I was smart. I kept all the old knobs and I've been able to use them for all sorts of different projects. I'm spray painting these with high heat barbecue paint. It is the best flat black paint you'll ever get your hands on and it's really not even that expensive. It comes in a spray can and it dries in less than two to three minutes. I really love using this product. I'm going to glue the feet on using Weld Bond glue. This is my favorite glue to use when I want a permanent hold. It's nice and thick and tacky. And the main reason I love it is that it holds permanently forever, but it also only takes about 10 minutes for it to dry so you can continue working on your project. That is a real game changer. 
I like to apply it using a brush because then I have way more control. But this little bottle is also getting down to the end. So using a brush makes me use up everything that I have. I really love how this little riser turned out. It'll be a great addition to add to some of my shelves and tablescapes. I hope you enjoyed my video today and got some inspiration to flip some of your own home decor. If you like this kind of content, I'd love for you to stick around. Hit that subscribe button. That black arrow will show you exactly where to click. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. See you in the next one.